Hello and welcome to Gelato's Parlor. This is Ray Gelato and this is uh, my first in a series of podcasts which I hope you enjoy and in these podcasts I'm going to be talking about music, gigs, London, life, all that kind of thing. We're going to try to make it pretty diverse and have some people on for uh, interviews and that sort of stuff so I uh, really hope you enjoy it. Um, on this first podcast, uh, my introductory one, I thought that I would uh, tell you how I got the name Gelato. Uh, everybody asks me this same question uh, over and over again in interviews and on gigs and what have you. And uh, often I tell them it's a kind of bit of a long story, but it's quite funny. Um, and sometimes I'll just say, no, I, I, I really can't be bothered to say that. So I thought on this first one, I'll uh, enlighten you and go uh, over the story, how I got the, the name Gelato, because it's not my real name, it's been my stage name for more than 30 years, and uh, my real name is Raymond Keith Irwin, Keith, oh my god, whoever thought to name me that, what a dashing name, <laughs> so um, anyway, Gelato has served me well over the years, uh, and I will go on now to tell you how I got the, the name, so Basically, I'm not going to go on this podcast, I'm not going to go into details how I got started in the game, because it's such a long story, I'll save that for another time. But let's just say I was a aspiring saxophone player, um, I was doing a little bit of study and I was doing a couple of gigs here and there, I'd only played for a, maybe two years, and for some reason I had my tenor saxophone in a case, and I was walking through Camden Town, Camden Lock Market, and what happened was I heard this guitar playing. And it was fantastic. It was like something I'd never heard. It was like a, a Django Reinhardt sort of thing, a very jazzy guitar. Now, I didn't know too much about jazz then, but I was hearing this fantastic melody and it was um, wonderful. So I got closer and I saw this fella playing the guitar and he had a guy with a double bass covered in leopard skin. <laughs> double bass had leopard skin all over it. And this fella playing the guitar uh, had little round glasses on, braces, Vintage shirt, tie, high-waisted um, pinstripe trousers and brothel creepers, you know, that the old teddies, teddy boys used to wear. And he looked, you know, he had his own style. As I listened to him, he played great, you know, really, really well. And I can't really remember exactly what he was playing at that time, but um, it was sort of jazzy and swing bass material, standard sort of stuff. And um, I spoke to him and said, listen, man, would you mind if I took my sax out to play? He says, well, can you play? I says, why? I, I, I can play, yeah, I play okay. I, I've been studying at the City Lit, which was around a corner in Holb and the City Lit College, and I was studying theory and music harmony and stuff like that. So anyway, I got my sax out, played with him, and he says, oh, you, it's, it's a French guy, you see. So I says, what, what, what's your name? He says, Maurice, Maurice. Maurice is my name. The bass player, I believe, was a guy called Mick, who had this double, big double bass covered in leopard skin. So uh, I said to Maurice, where are you from? He says, I'm French, in French. So he was a French guy, you know. And basically I found out that he called himself Maurice Chevalier. Maurice Chevalier, which, you know, is a great name that people remember. So I played. He says, oh, you played pretty good, you know. So we didn't think much more of it. And next week I was there again. Because uh, that's right, I was at the City Lit. So I'd go to uh, camp. I'd walk to um, Camden Lock from, from Holborn. I'd take a long walk. And um, had my sax in my case, saw him again. He says, ah, uh, 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 how are you? So I got up to play with him again, him and Mick, the bass player, and we played a bit. And uh, anyway, to cut a long story short, it became a regular occurrence. We, we started playing together. Uh, me, Maurice Chevalier, and this guy called Mick. Anyway, Mick ended up leaving for some reason, or falling out with Maurice, because Maurice was a formidable character. And we ended up getting a... T chess bass player, a guy called a fantastic guy called Lloyd Gordon, who was like me, he was from that rocking rockabilly scene. Um, it was going on in the sort of eighties and late late seventies, and I knew Lloyd, so we, so we had the T chess bass, Maurice Chevalier, and me on the saxophone. So the band became known as the Chevalier Brothers, which this band did incredibly well. We played everywhere. We it paved the way for the. Uh, the sort of swing revival, I think, you know, long before the American thing in the 90s. And we were playing the swing music and the, you know, that kind of stuff to young people, which was incredible. We were young ourselves at the time. So, Maurice, uh, he didn't know my name. 
because uh, we just used to play. He just knew me as Ray, and we used to play every single week. So we started playing in Camden Town, in Covent Garden, and I'm talking about playing on the street, like busking, you know. But busking back then was a little bit different because you had a pitch, and I remember on that pitch you'd have people like Julian Clary and John Hegley and people like that, um, stand-up comics, um, doing this this kind of thing, you know, along with us. So it was uh, we were all getting to be uh, getting a little bit of a name, which was fantastic. So we were building up such a name as the Chevalier Brothers, playing in Camden Lock every Saturday and every Sunday. That one Sunday, the New Musical Express, the NME, came down to to interview us because we were beginning to make a, a splash by being street musicians. So you know that's in effect how I kind of got started, you know, playing. And we were getting better. I was getting better and better listening to this fantastic guitar player, uh, Maurice Chevalier, play. And he was telling me, uh, advising me who to listen to, like Django Reinhardt, Charlie Christian, Benny Goodman. So I was doing my practice and also my studies at the City Lit College to learn how to, you know, uh, understand about music and play the saxophone. And every, I, I, by the way, I wasn't singing at that time. I was just playing sax. Everybody loved it. We used to make money. We were making, I think, 40, 50 quid a day. That was double bubble in those days. So we we're making 40 quid at Camden Town and 40 pounds, something like that, each, each in Covent Garden. And it was incredible money in those days just by, in effect, busking. But So we built up this audience. The New Musical Express came down. And they interviewed us, you see, but I'd gone off to get a, something to eat, got to get a burger or something. So they interviewed Morris and they said, uh, you know, what's your name? Uh, Morris Chevalier, Lloyd, Lloyd on the bass. They said, what's that saxophone player with a muscles name? Because I had muscles in those days, you see. I had, a, I had a, you know, a big, big uh, physique. I was doing all the working out and eating all the protein stuff. I used to wear a tight T-shirt and jeans. <laughs> and had the hair greased back, you know. And, um, the saxophone player, the, the sorry, Morris turned around and said to the enemy, he says, uh, Ray. And they says, Ray what? What's his second name? And they looked at the sax player with the muscles. What's his second name? So he, he honestly didn't know my last name. He looked at the ice cream stand um, in Camden Lock Market. And he says, Ray Gelato. So they printed Ray Gelato a couple of days later in the thing. And I was livid. I was livid. I had no idea he told them that. And when I read the interview, it said, yeah, fantastic little band. They're making a bit of a splash around London. Uh, they call themselves the Chevalier Brothers. The guitar player's a French guy that's got these little glasses and he's a real hip character. And we got this guy with this flat top, dyed sort of purple flat top, uh, uh, Lloyd on the bass. And the saxophone player's this young guy, Italian-looking guy with these big muscles. It looks like Sylvester Stallone, they said. And his name's Ray Gelato. I went mad. I says, oh, man, you're embarrassing me too much. No, he says, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, they remember, people remember your name. And he was right, you know. So I had to, I was stuck with the name Ray Gelato by then. But uh, what I did forget to say was one of the funniest things was um, before that, as he only knew me as Ray, he called me Luigi Muscle. So he did produce me on the stage before that. As the, uh, on the saxophone, the Luigi Muscle. And I, 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 so I'm quite glad that Ray Gelato stuck rather than Luigi Muscle. <laughs> well, anyway, that's my first little podcast. And I hope I'm going to share some funny and comical stories with you in the future. We're going to keep them quite short. They'll be varying lengths. But um, that basically was how the Chevalier Brothers got born. Just um, to end, we went on to do, you know, really good things. We had a, a deal with WA Warner Brothers and... Uh, we played in Japan, we played in Memphis, we played all over Europe, we played festivals, um, all the London circuit at the time, which I will go into in more depth how that, that London circuit was back then in the early 80s. It was very, very vibrant. But I don't want to give too much away, so what I'll do is I'll um, go into all that at another occasion. But uh, So anyway, now you know how I got the name Ray Gelato. It was from a crazy Frenchman. And uh, this is Gelato's Parlour. I really hope you've enjoyed listening and I hope you'll continue to listen to this uh, uh, little show I'm doing. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.